Hey everyone, and welcome back to the lab. Today I'll be making iron sulfide from the elements. Now before I get started, I'd like to say uh, I was hesitant initially to film this video, just simply because this is an extremely simple procedure. It's in basically every inorganic chemistry textbook. It's been done on YouTube a million times. It's kind of uh, a dead horse that... Uh, I'm beating again here. But I find myself here prepping for a bigger video, uh, which by the way, I'm trying to come out with a new video every Sunday in, in all of 2018. So I'll be doing a lot of weekly prep work such as this, and here I am on a Thursday night making a bunch of iron sulfide thinking, why am I not filming this? And I thought of the old uh, adage, which is very true in chemistry, one hour in the library saves four hours in the laboratory, and that is completely true. I can't tell you how many organic syntheses I've done where beforehand I've read through eight, ten, even 12 papers of people who've had to do this because somewhere along the line there's someone who had to make a whole bunch of it at some point and they optimize that process and they have some secret trick that you can use that saves you tons of prep, tons of laboratory time, tons of cleaning glassware, things like that. So I decided to go ahead and, uh, and film and produce the uh, iron sulfide video in hopes that someone might use this video for the tricks that may be contained herein. Also I haven't seen anyone make iron sulfide quite on the scale I'm about to do it today. So anyway, uh, without further ado, iron sulfide. Enjoy! Okay, so to make the iron sulfide, you simply need a stoichiometric mixture of iron and sulfur, both in powdered form. Those are mixed together very well and then lit on fire. And uh, once ignited, they burn with sort of a smoldering reaction with blue sulfur flames on top. And at the end, you're left with a solid sort of sintered chunk of iron sulfide, which you can then pulverize that and use it. And I'll be using it in an upcoming video for making hydrogen sulfide. Now, there's a couple caveats. Uh, number one, you can't use iron powder bigger than about 200 mesh. Now, mesh size refers to the particle size of the iron. I have this 200 mesh iron laying around for laboratory use, for doing things like, for instance, a Clemenson reduction, which involves iron in HCl. Now, if I had iron powder, like dust, or if I had uh, iron filings, for instance, those have very high surface areas, and although they're very good for doing reductions like that, because of their high surface area, there's an activation process that's necessary prior to the reduction, which involves soaking this in, in uh, hydrochloric acid, and you end up losing a lot of iron, and you end up with a lot of iron sulfate in your product uh, when you go ahead and do things like that. So I tend to use the larger, larger mesh size iron like this for uh, organic chemistry, whereas this iron powder that you can buy on eBay, and I got both of them on eBay, I guess, but this is just iron powder for like magnetic experiments, and it's a much finer powder. It's not quite dust, which I've also seen, but that's very expensive. This is just uh, sort of like iron filings, and it will work just fine. Now, I don't particularly need good alloy control of this because even if there are additional metals, um, when I'm making hydrogen sulfide, excess sulfur won't matter because it won't react with the acid. Iron will react with the acid, but the excess won't really matter because it's just going to produce excess hydrogen, which is inert to the reaction I'll be using. Uh, and if there are any other metals in the iron powder, they'll end up either as the sulfide, just like the iron, or as just the base metal. And again, the acid reacting with either of those is going to be inconsequential. If it reacts with the sulfide, it'll be more hydrogen sulfide. If it reacts with the, uh, with the metal, it'll just be more hydrogen if it reacts at all. So you can use pretty much any dirty old iron for this. This product here isn't going to be particularly pure, uh, but it will suffice for, for what I'll be using it for. So anyway, uh, I'm going to shut up and we can go to the laboratory and, uh, and do this. Okay, so I've got the ingredients measured out here. I've determined that I wanted to make 200 grams of iron sulfide to store in the laboratory for future use in making hydrogen sulfide particularly. So that will require 127 grams of iron powder and 73 grams of sulfur powder stoichiometrically. Um, and I'm going to mix them in this steel container here. Now this is just an empty, I think, quart size paint can. This works perfectly for this job. You can toss both ingredients in here snap the lid on, shake it up really well to make, make sure the ingredients are completely mixed, and then you can loosen the lid, ignite the contents outside, of course. Uh, the reaction will take place, and it'll cool down, protected from the elements by the lid, at which point you can bring it back inside and knock the, uh, the iron sulfide out, grind it up, and put it in a container. So that's the plan. I'm going to go ahead and add those components to the container now. There they are, and I'll snap the lid down and begin mixing. Now 
Okay, you should be able to see now that the powders are indeed well mixed. Take a sample out into the light and you can see it's pretty much homogenous and that means that we're ready to go. I'm just going to get a piece of fuse and stick it in there and then we can take this outside and light it on fire. Okay, so I lied a little bit in the last clip. I'm actually going to do it inside. I was going to do it outside, but I stepped out and it was pouring rain and it's uh, pitch black out there, obviously, because this time of winter in the northern hemisphere. Did not expect it to be raining because it's the middle of January in Michigan, so um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, since the weather is poor, I've decided to set up my fume hood. Now, you probably haven't seen this fume hood unless you've watched the very beginning video of this entire channel. Um, and this fume hood is pretty interesting. It's sort of sloppily put together right now, but you can see this, this hood piece here hinges up and it actually attaches to the ceiling, so you don't normally see it. Locks to the bench. And then there's these side pieces that slide in. Now there's tracks down there that the side pieces slide into, but the boards are so warped at this point that they no longer slide in. So you might be able to see that there are some pretty big gaps around the edges here that uh, aren't filled in anymore. But it's still good for what it's supposed to do. It will pull all the fumes out uh, from doing this. I've got the can with the reaction mixture on it set up on a fire brick and that'll protect the table and I'm going to go ahead and fuse this up and uh, and touch it off and we can go ahead and do it with the lid off this time because uh, there's nothing really to protect it from Let's see how well we can see through that eh, I guess I'll leave it up unless it gets too smoky fuse all right so here's a bit of fuse I'm going to Pack the powder down a little bit. Okay, and then we will insert the fuse. And I uh, hope I don't burn my house down. Here we go. for now. And you can see how efficiently that smoke is getting extracted. Okay, so unfortunately the fuse did not light the mixture. Um, it looks like it kind of fell out of the mixture and sort of zoomed around inside there rather than actually lighting it. So I'm going to do this the old-fashioned way and just uh, Hit it with the old propane torch. I think that'll do it. You can see the blue sulfur flames. I actually turned the light off, that'd be kind of cool. You can see the paint starting to burn off the can. It's getting awfully hot. And the mixture inside, if I can bring the camera up, is actually glowing. You can see there as it slowly burns. You can see the outside of the can getting really hot as the reaction progresses around. It'll be cool when the reaction gets to this side. Oh, here we go. It's really going now. I'm actually going to Unplug my temperature controller. I forgot I, left it. Oops, forgot I left it in there. There we go. And that's about it. And in there, we should be able to see. Yep. There's some really hot, some really hot iron sulfide. Now I'm actually going to put the. Uh, the lid on to minimize this contact with the atmosphere, although it really doesn't matter, and that will uh, just sort of protect it a little bit while it cools down. You can hear it crackling as it cools down and splits up. 
it's still quite a bit of heat coming off of it. I can feel it on my face. All right, so the can has now cooled almost completely. It's still just barely warm on the bottom, but certainly cool enough to touch. When I open it up, you can see inside, there's just a hard crust of uh, iron sulfide that's pretty much a giant brick. So what I'm gonna do is put the lid back on and shake the crap out of it again to pulverize it up and then uh, store it in a jar. That's basically it. There's our iron sulfide, I'll go ahead and label this. All right, and here's the final product. It is a dark brown to blackish uh, fine powder mixed with some hard lumps consisting primarily of iron sulfide. Now this is just under 200 grams, which is enough to make um, just under three moles of hydrogen sulfide, which is plenty uh, for the videos I have that are coming up. So I look forward to doing that. I'm trying to come up with a new video every Sunday in 2018, plus some on the weekdays, such as this one, which involves some of the smaller preparations that I need to make for some of those videos, as I mentioned earlier in the video. But uh, yeah, that's about it for uh, iron sulfide. Hey, if you like this video as much as I like making it, please press the like button. If you want to see more videos, especially the Sunday videos in 2018, please press the subscribe button. If you'd like to become a patron, um, you can get your name in the credits of a video. Uh, just go ahead, I'll put a link in the description to my Patreon page. Thank you to the January patrons, by the way, for uh, making these videos possible. However, the credits for your donations will not appear in January videos, only in February videos um, after that uh, month, if that fiscal month has ended. That's just how Patreon works. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching.